Madam Speaker, pursuant to House Resolution 696, I call up H.R. 5021 with a Senate amendment thereto, and I have a motion at the desk. The clerk will report the title of the bill, designate the Senate amendment, and designate the motion. Would, would members please take their conversations off the floor? The clerk will report the title of the bill, designate the Senate amendment, and designate the motion. H.R. 5021, an act to provide an extension of federal aid highway, highway safety, motor carrier safety, transit, and other programs funded out of the Highway Trust Fund and for other purposes. Senate amendment. Motion offered by Mr. Schuster of Pennsylvania. Pursuant to House Resolution 696, the motion shall be debatable for one hour, equally divided and controlled by the chair and ranking minority member of the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure, the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Schuster, and the gentleman from West Virginia, Mr. Rahal. Each will control 30 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Pennsylvania. Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous materials on this motion. Without objection. I, Madam Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized for such time as he may consume. Thank you, Madam Speaker. We have an immediate critical need to address the solvency of the trust fund and extend the current tr surface transportation law. If Congress fails to act, thousands of transportation projects and hundreds of thousands of jobs across the country will be at risk. Two weeks ago, the House acted and passed H.R. 5021, the Highway Transportation Funding Act of 2014. This important legislation extends federal surface transportation programs, ensures the, insolvent, ensures the insolvency of the Highway Trust Fund through May of 2015, and provides certainty. The House overwhelmingly passed H.R. 5021 with a bipartisan vote of 367 to 55. Then we waited for the Senate to act. We continued to wait and wait. Then on Tuesday, the Senate finally acted. The Senate amended our bill to reduce funding on the Highway Trust Fund and only extend surface transportation programs through December 19 of 2014. The Senate approach is deeply flawed. First, the Senate proposal is not fully offset. It underfunds the Highway Trust Fund by more than $2 billion. And second, the Senate's shorter extension would guarantee a manufactured crisis in a lame duck session, when some might be inclined to play politics with these issues or use them as vehicles for unrelated policies that should, be, that should be subject to the full and open debate they deserve. Today, the House is considering a motion to disagree with the Senate amendments to H.R. 5021 and send our original bill back to the Senate. I strongly support this motion. This course of action in no way precludes Congress from continuing to work on addressing a long-term funding solution and a long-term reauthorization bill, which remains a top priority for the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. The House will be in order. The gentleman from Pennsylvania deserves to be heard. Please take your conversations off the floor, and would people in the gallery uh, please recognize the decorum of the House. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I look forward to working with my colleagues in the Senate on our shared goal of enacting a long-term surface transportation reauthorization bill. However, this approach is the responsible solution at this time. It ensures that we don't play politics with these programs and enables us to continue making improvements to our surface transportation system. I strongly urge all members to support this motion. A vote against this motion is a vote to shut down these projects and programs and would put more than 6,000 projects and 700,000 jobs at risk. With that, Madam Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Pennsylvania reserves. The gentleman from West Virginia is recognized. Uh, Madam Speaker, I yield my such time, such time as I may consume. The gentleman from West Virginia is recognized. Madam Speaker, two weeks ago, I stood in this exact spot and urged passage of a highway trust fund patch as soon as possible to keep, keep our surface transportation program up and running. Now we stand at the edge of an enormous cliff with days, not weeks, to go before the trust fund goes belly up and the Transportation Department starts rationing payments to states. 
We do not have the luxury of time to deliberate or trade further ideas. Congress needs to act now to enact a bill and avert an unnecessary crisis. That's why I will support the motion before us today, but not because I think the House bill is a better approach. The Senate extended programs through December to keep the pressure on Congress to enact a long-term highway bill as soon as possible. I fully support this approach. Unfortunately, the Senate amendment contains a technical error. It does not fully offset the transfer to the Highway Trust Fund. And the House Republican leadership has made it clear that the House will not consider a highway bill that is not fully offset. With a single legislative day left to address this looming crisis, we need to ensure continued funding of our roads, bridges, transit systems, and the safety of our travelers and passengers. Two weeks ago, House Democrats supported a shorter extension as an alternative to H.R. 5021. This approach was rejected by House Republicans. Today, the House Republican leadership will not even allow us a vote on a fix to the technical error in the Senate amendment. The House bill and the Senate amendment both help states get through the remainder of this construction season. And they both provide the opportunity for Congress to come together on a bipartisan basis, which the chairman and I have done so well under his tenure and for which I commend him, and pass a long-term surface transportation law in a lame duck session. There's absolutely no reason that Congress cannot come together and complete a long-term highway bill this fall. So uh, I repeat the point I just made, that this legislation that we're acting on today does not preclude us from coming together in a lame duck session of Congress and doing what's necessary for the American people, and that is passing a long-term, robustly funded transportation bill that puts our people to work and repa repairs our decaying infrastructure. So uh, while I will vote for this motion today, it's not because the House approach is a better solution, but it, because it does provide the only path forward available to us to avert an immediate crisis and still allow the opportunity for Congress to do the right thing. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from West Virginia reserves. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'm now pleased to yield three minutes to the gentleman from, from Indiana, Mr. Bouchon. The gentleman from Indiana is recognized for three minutes. Thank you. Madam Speaker, I rise today in support of this important motion. Last year, I was honored to be a conferee on, on MAP 21, and I'm proud of the bill our conference committee produced. Our nation's transportation projects are being completed faster, and states like my home state of Indiana received more federal funding than they had in the past. With construction season underway, we need to ensure that every state can continue with their important summer construction projects. This legislation, this motion, is vital to keep thousands of Americans working to rebuild our aging infrastructure. Funding our nation's infrastructure should not be a political issue. We all agree that we need a long-term solution to fund our nation's crumbling infrastructure. But today, we need to approve this motion. The proposal from our Senate colleagues contained an error in financing for their bill that only paid for funding through October, not December. The error came in over $2 billion short. Nobody plans even the smallest transportation project on a month-to-month -month basis, and we should not be providing funding on a month-to-month -month basis. The Senate bill is not a viable solution for our states. I met with Indiana Governor Mike Pence this morning who reiterated to me how important it is to continue to provide long-term funding for every state. The House bill is the only proposal that gives every state the opportunity to adequately plan through this construction season and into the spring. The House bill is the only solution that is going to keep people working to rebuild our nation's infrastructure. I thank Chairman Schuster for his strong leadership on this issue, and I urge all of my colleagues to support this motion. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from Pennsylvania reserves. The gentleman from West Virginia is recognized. Madam Speaker, I'm honored to yield uh, two minutes at this time to the distinguished ranking member on our Highways and Transit Committee, the General Lady from the District of Columbia, Eleanor Holmes-Norton. The gentlewoman from the District of Columbia, 
is recognized for two minutes. Uh, Madam Speaker, I thank my good friend, the ranking member of the full committee, for his work to try to get us a full, fully funded bill, as I'm sure the chairman desired as well. But I must say, Madam Speaker, we've shored up the Highway Trust Fund five, four times since 2008. Four patches. This would be the fifth. Uh, until May. And everyone knows what we're doing. We're setting ourselves up for another series of short-term extensions. We don't dare leave the trust fund insolvent, not us, but we don't have the guts to help our own states get on with urgently needed projects. Short-term funding is like no funding. Where is the dissent uh, on this traditionally bipartisan bill, the highway bill? It is certainly not in the states. It's in the Republican caucus where they have a crisis uh, among some of their members who believe that spending money on anything is an original sin, even at the demand of their own constituents. Uh, Madam Speaker, I don't have the figures from my own district, so I give you some figures at random from the state of Arkansas, which I chose at random to indicate what this bill means for the states. Arkansas relies uh, for about 70 percent of its uh, transportation funding on this bill. It's put off 15 projects, even with this bill coming, and I'm quoting from its Highway uh, and Transportation Department, we don't feel comfortable going forward with these projects because we're not sure if the Highway Trust Fund will be resolved in time to fully see these projects to completion. That's the position you're leaving the states. Uh, an official from the American Roads and Transportation Builders spoke about uh, what this funding does. Uh, he says, if you have just uh, have a percent of your, could have another minute or two. Oh, you're the general lady another minute. Uh, the gentlewoman's uh, recognized for one minute. If you have your money coming in on an almost annual or every other year basis, uh, subject to being shut down by Congress, uh, you cannot make long-term investments and hire people. The tragedy of these pat pitches, patches is they have a human face, millions of construction workers now working on a piecework basis. The differences between the House and the Senate are easily reconcilable. They passed their bill 79 to 18. What is wrong with this House uh, in the past? Uh, we would have gotten these differences resolved. There's been plenty of time since MAP 21. If two years has not been enough, what in the world do we think the next eight or nine months will mean? Time is not the problem. Will is. Let's spend this time in the recess getting a long-term bill as our states are demanding. I yield back. The gentlewoman yields back to the gentleman from West Virginia Reserves. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized. Uh, Madam Speaker, it's now my pleasure to uh, yield three, two minutes to the gentleman from Oklahoma. The gentleman from Oklahoma is recognized for two minutes. Thank you. It is uh, with great pleasure that I stand in front of you today in support of H.R. 5021, the Highway Transportation and Funding Act. You know, we as a body stand here all the time and we talk about creating jobs. What we need to do is create an atmosphere where jobs can thrive. If this bill, for some reason, doesn't pass, we're talking about putting over 700,000 jobs at risk. In Oklahoma alone, that's 200 construction jobs at risk. We need time. Yes, this Congress, this body, every now and then we push things down the road, but we are truly trying to find a real solution. The Senate, well, the Senate bill, it just didn't give us enough time. This will push it through May and allow us to look at a long-term funding solution. Now, either we're going to stand up as a whole and say, yes, this is our responsibility. Yes, we're going to provide that, that, that industry confidence that this body is going to stay with them. Or what we say when we're talking about creating jobs really doesn't mean anything. Look, we have an opportunity here to build confidence in, a, in construction workers and contractors 
that we depend on every day, we, we rely on them to get to and from work. When we go to our local stores, we provide, or we, we, we depend on them to make sure the goods are delivered there. And we're going to say that we, we're going to continue bickering about it a little bit, or we're going to stand up and say, we're going to make sure you're funded. Let's stand up and say, we support you. We're going to make sure that industry and the 700,000 jobs that are there, we're going to make sure that you go to work tomorrow. Let's make sure that we stand together as a body and invest in our infrastructure. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. The gentleman from Pennsylvania Reserves, the gentleman from West Virginia is recognized. Madam Speaker, it's my honor to yield now to a former member of our powerful House Transportation Committee who decided to go to the esteemed Ways and Means Committee, the gentleman from Oregon, Mr. Blumenauer. I'll yield uh, four minutes. I appreciate the gentleman's courtesy the and his leadership. I listen to my friend from Oklahoma. I wish four his leadership would listen to him to create an atmosphere of certainty and move forward. There's a reason why the stakeholders uniformly supported the Senate approach. The Senate approach said, wait a minute, on a bipartisan basis, 79 votes, 25 Republicans said, we're not going to kick this into the next Congress. Because that's where the crisis is going to be. You'll be in the middle of a new Congress. Who knows what the lineup is going to be in the House and the Senate and presidential elections. And you won't be giving the certainty to the industry that they're asking for. That's why construction trades, contractors, a the AFL-CIO, Chamber of Commerce, the people who uh, pave the roads were uniformly supporting the Senate approach. They don't want to slide it into the next year. I serve on the Ways and Means Committee. I have been trying for now three and one half years to get the Republicans who control the Ways and Means Committee to have a hearing on transportation finance. We have not had one in three and a half years. Now that's the responsibility of the Ways and Means Committee. I left the TNI Committee hoping that I could help you in the pursuit of resources. Three and a half years, not a single hearing. My goodness, that's why we've had ever shorter reauthorizations. I don't count a 27-month bill as a reauthorization. And we had 21 short-term extensions. Now, the Senate, well, in the House here, the Democrats uniformly said, let's get enough money to get us through the year. And let's work together on the long-term issues. Maybe we could even have a hearing on finance. The Senate, and when that, our motion didn't go, didn't pass, although it was supported by all but three of our colleagues on the Democratic side, when it didn't pass, we didn't pick up our marbles and go home. We provided enough votes because the Republicans didn't have enough votes to pass it. We provided enough votes hoping that we could get something better coming back from the Senate. And we did get something better coming back from the Senate. There was a drafting error that we could pass a uh, fix for in 14 and a half seconds on the floor of the House if we had the spirit of accommodation and follow through, which my friend, the ranking member, has seen in his long years and has participated in to try and advance it. But no, what we have seen is people going to turn their back they're going to slide into the next Congress. We're going to duck all the tough issues. We haven't heard anything that deals with how we're going to move forward. The TNI committee doesn't have a bill. Now, I would respectfully suggest that we ought to reject this motion. That, in fact, we ought not to uh, reject the, what the Senate did. Let's work together. We can, we can solve this in a matter of minutes if people are committed to doing so. And in, we would be keeping faith with the people who build, who operate, and who, op and who rely upon the transportation systems in this country. 
We have a unique moment in history to be on the side of that vast nonpartisan coalition that wants us to do our job. I'd respectfully request that we do it and that we commit as a body that we're not going on vacation in August, we're not going to recess to campaign, and we won't recess for the year until we do our job for the American public. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. We have no further speakers, and I continue to reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from West Virginia is recognized. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'm uh, happy to yield uh, at this time three minutes to the gentleman from Oregon, a valued member of our Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, and the ranking member of the House Natural Resources Committee. The gentleman Mr. from DeFazio. Oregon is recognized for three minutes. I thank the gentleman uh, for yielding. You know, uh, many years ago I, I worked as a bicycle mechanic, so I know how to patch a tube. But if you get to the point where you can't see the tube anymore for the patches, then it's time for a new tube. Well, that's where we're at here today. We've had study after study that are, we are not even investing enough money in our infrastructure to uh, bring it up to a state of good repair, let alone build a modern 21st century, century infrastructure. We were the envy of the world with the Eisenhower program. We were the envy of the world. Number one infrastructure in the world. Where are we now? We're number 26. We're down there slugging it out with third world countries in terms of our infrastructure. 140,000 bridges. 140,000 bridges on the national highway system need repair or replacement. 40% of the national highway system is so deteriorated it has to be totally replaced. You can't just patch it anymore. You just can't resurface it anymore. And our transit agencies have a $70 billion backlog to bring their existing systems up to a state of good repair, not to build new, new transit options for Americans. No, just to bring what we have up to a state of good repair. Why are we here today? Because there's people on that side of the aisle who actually don't believe it is either the duty, obligation, or right of the federal government to invest in a national highway system, a national transportation system. They believe in devolution. Make the states do it. We tried that. In the 1950s, Kansas built a brand new turnpike. It ended at the Oklahoma border because Oklahoma ran out of money. And they didn't build it until the Eisenhower bill went through. They want to go back to those good old days, the 1950s, when you couldn't even have roads that connected between states. That's nuts. It was bad in the middle of the last century. It's nuts for the 21st century. So are we just going to kick the can down the road again? If they, if we pass this Republican proposal to continue the current anemic levels of funding until next May, that is not going to bring the states uh, the sh certainty they need. It's not going to bring the industry uh, the robust investment they need. It's not going to get us the jobs we need. Yeah, we'll limp along to next May and then there'll be incredible uncertainty about the next construction season. There won't be major new projects planned. Nothing will happen. We need to resolve that this year. We should stay here, as the gentleman from Oregon said, and resolve it this August. Five weeks, guys? Five weeks? We can't get to this issue, and then you're going to kick it into next year. Better, at least, that we're confronted with it before the end of this year. Then maybe we can get a robust funding source. Maybe we can make the investments we need. Maybe we could give the states the tools they need next construction season and the certainty they need next construction season to go forward. You know, we just had a study from Standard & Poor's that for every $1.3 billion we put into transportation infrastructure, we get, would the gentleman yield an additional minute? Does he have it? I'll yield the gentleman additional minute. Okay. Uh, we just had a Standard & Poor's study. 29,000 jobs are created. And these are not just construction jobs. They're engineering jobs. They're technical jobs. They're manufacturing jobs for the equipment that goes into this or the steel that goes into this. These are small business jobs with a small business set aside. We are foregoing an incredible stimulus to our economy, putting hundreds of thousands of Americans back to work or at work, uh, building us yet again toward a world-class infrastructure. You know, it's, it's just shameful. It's just shameful. This has been bipartisan forever. Washington, canals, and highways. Lincoln, 
the uh, Transcontinental Railroad, Eisenhower, the National Highway System, and Ronald Reagan put transit into the National Highway Program. And now we're here limping along with yet another patch that isn't adequate, that won't give us the recovery we need, won't give us the transportation infrastructure we need to be competitive in the 21st century. It's a very sad day. We should reject uh, this proposal and uh, get to work. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's now my pleasure to yield two minutes to the Chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Mr. Camp. The gentleman from Michigan is recognized for two minutes. Well, and I thank the distinguished Chairman for yielding. Uh, look, the House passed their version of highway funding more than two weeks ago. The Senate acted last night. And because of their rush, there was actually a drafting error in the Senate version of the highway bill that either creates a $2 billion hole in the deficit or only funds the program through early October. Now, the House is not scheduled to be in session in October. So I would suggest to my friends, I think the best thing to do at this stage of the game is to accept this proposal and send the House bill back to the Senate, which does a couple of things. It certainly does not increase the deficit. And second, as the Senate bill does, because of their mistake, but also it gets us through May 31. Now, I've committed to the distinguished gentleman uh, on the other side that the Ways and Means Committee will have a hearing on transportation funding in September when we return. But this gives us the time to look at the competing proposals to finance our infrastructure. And look, those disagreements don't necessarily fall along partisan lines, as the previous speaker might have suggested. Not everybody agrees with the gas tax. Not everybody agrees with miles driven. Not everybody agrees with tolls. And we're going to have to work through those alternatives and see what other proposals might be there to see where we can move forward. And I believe we can move forward in a bipartisan way on this issue because our infrastructure needs, I would agree with the previous speaker, our infrastructure needs are dire. They are important. We do need to move forward on a long-term funding bill. But if we don't get past October, we're going to have, and if we don't do this today, October, August 1 is the day the contracts start ending. I think that would be completely irresponsible to allow that to begin to occur. So let's have continuity in transportation projects and funding, support the House bill, send it back to the Senate. I'm certain, given the mistake in their legislation, this will be accepted when it gets to the other side, and I yield back the balance of my time. The uh, gentleman yields back. The gentleman from West Virginia is recognized. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'll yield uh, two minutes to the distinguished gentleman from uh, Oregon, Mr. Blumenauer. Thank you. The gentleman from Oregon is recognized for two minutes. Thank you very much. I deeply appreciate the comments of my good friend, the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, with whom I've enjoyed working uh, for eight years now uh, on the committee. And I appreciate his indicating that we will have a hearing on transportation finance in September. I welcome that, and I absolutely agree that people are all over the map. Some people want to get us out of the transportation system on a federal level. Devolution. Some want more resources, some want to limp along. And I look forward to having that conversation. But I would just make three brief observations. One is that I, it's true we're not scheduled to be in business uh, in October. I think that, frankly, is wrong. I don't think we should recess to campaign when there's all these questions about transportation and we could roll up our sleeves and actually do something. I, for one, be happy to be here in October working to avoid a cliff next May. Second, there is a $2 billion drafting mistake on the part of the Senate. These things are not unforeseen or uh, uh, unexpected. They, we've had experience with them in the past. I'm quite confident in a matter of minutes we could work with the Senate and put the right language in and we'd be able to avoid that problem if we were committed to solving a problem the way that the stakeholders business, labor, local government, state, transit, environmentalists, equipment manufacturers, the whole range of people would be happy if we'd sit down and be able to fix the modest little technical problem and embrace what all but three Democrats voted for two weeks ago 
and what 79 Rep uh, Republicans and Democrats voted for in the Senate. Uh, I uh, appreciate what I've heard, and I look forward to working with the gentleman to see what progress we can make. And I volunteer to be here in October with him. The we don't have much of you expired. left, Dave. <laughs> the gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized. I have no further speakers, and I continue to yield or continue to reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Pennsylvania reserves. The gentleman from West Virginia is recognized. Madam Speaker, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from West Virginia yields back. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I'll conclude and yield myself the balance of my time. In closing, I'd like to reiterate my strong support of this motion. Disagrees, it disagrees with the Senate amendment to H.R. 5021 and sends our original bill back to the Senate. Uh, which we passed 367 to 55. Our bill is a responsible solution that ensures we don't play politics with these programs, enables us, enables us to continue making improvements to our surface transportation system. This course of action in no way precludes Congress from continuing to work on addressing a long-term funding solution a long -term and a long-term reauthorization bill, which remains a top priority for the Transportation Infrastructure Committee. I strongly urge all members to support this motion, and let me be perfectly clear, a vote against this motion is a vote to shut down surface transportation projects and programs. The American people deserve better than that, and we can do better than that. So I respectfully urge all my colleagues to join me in supporting this motion, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. All time for debate is expired. Pursuant to House Resolution 696, the previous question is ordered. The question is on the motion by the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Schuster. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion is agreed to, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Madam Speaker, I request the yeas and the nays. The yeas and nays are requested. Those favoring a vote by the yeas and nays will rise, a sufficient number having risen. The yeas and nays are ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, this 15-minute vote on adoption of the motion to disagree to the Senate amendment will be followed by a five-minute vote on the question on agreeing to the Speaker's approval of the journal, if ordered. This is a 15-minute vote.
On this vote, the yeas are 271 and the nays are 149. The motion is adopted. Without objection, a motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Ms. Wilson of Florida. Ms. Wilson of Florida votes no. Mr. Gosar. Mr. Gosar votes aye. On this vote, the yeas are 272, the nays are 149.